Hey, what's up? Good morning. It's Trent from Best of US Investors. And today I just want to hit upon the bank earnings. So they've been uh, coming out, JP Morgan, Citi, a uh, handful of others are coming out today. And what I've noticed so far is they all made money trading, trading stocks, trading um, investments. They're not making money on mortgages. They're not making money on commercial real estate. And to me, if you don't have a trading arm in your bank, well, chances are you're gonna have bad earnings. So should we expect the regional banks, the small banks to come back because they have commercial lending arms when it comes to commercial real estate and the regional banks and have them come back with their earnings saying, you know, maybe we didn't do so well and their earnings come back really bad. And I think that's where you're gonna see this consolidation or this downturn in the banking system where the haves and have nots really get separated out here over the next three quarters. And I think we're gonna start seeing that with a lot of the regional bank earnings because think about it. How do you make money as a bank? If you don't have a trading arm like JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs or any of these bigger behemoths, how do you make money? You make money by lending. Well, what's the problem with lending today? Lending today is expensive. For you to get a mortgage, a 30 year mortgage on a house, you're paying seven plus percent. Uh, yeah, that's if you have good credit if you can get a loan because these banks are tightening up as well so this is something i think we all have to take notice of the banking system as money continues to be expensive and we're seeing that with inflation rising with the cpi number that came out this week the cost of money or the cost of living i don't know about you but continuously goes up so the fed has to defend against that they have to not rate lower rates. I mean, think about it, they lower rates, they cause more inflation. Take into account that prior to this whole Israel Hamas issue, the shipping industry shipped products uh, typically from China to us, what, six times, six round trips per tanker, or not tanker, but per uh, shipping, uh, can shipping you know boat whatever you call them right six rounds a year that's from china to us and back well now because of this hamas thing and because now they're having to go around africa in some cases that amount of stuff that's going to be shipped is now only four round trips a year and that is most likely to continue which means there's less products hitting our uh, shores well if there's less products hitting our shores and you were to lower rates, for, uh, Chairman Powell, you would cause even more inflation because there's less product out there to buy. So really, this is a pickle situation. The only place right now that I would say the Fed can go with interest rates is up. Well, if they go up, that means is people are gonna buy less homes. And that's the biggest purchase most people make in their entire lives if the interest rates go up again small businesses are going to pay more think about if interest rates go up again i mean look at the 10-year over what five and a half percent you got the two-year pushing on five percent you look at these things and you go have to ask yourself the government is paying out the wazoo on interest costs they're adding a trillion dollars in debt every 100 days right now this is, you You have to start risk managing around this. If you're investing in this, you have to take this in account. This is not a, oh, over the last 100 years, the S&P has been up 12%. No, it hasn't. Because you haven't factored in the fact that you have a rising inflation environment, you have a declining value in the US dollar. And so let's say if we look at, you know, conservatively real inflation being uh, let's say 12%, okay? If you use the math of the 1970s, right? Uh, how they calculated uh, inflation. 
And then you look at the dollar devaluing by about a 10% uh, on an annual basis uh, over the last 10 years, you're now at 22% decline in your buying power. So how much do you have to get in return in your portfolio to just be even if you're saving for retirement? Well, probably over 30% just to be even based on your buying power uh, perspective. Now, nobody's gonna tell you that, nobody's gonna discuss that, but we will at the best of US investors. So if you're not a subscriber, you should subscribe. We've got a 50% off until midnight on Sunday on the Platinum channel. And eventually there will only be the Platinum channel available. So you would get 50% off $60 at $30. You get Carrie's cheat sheet, you get the ETF tracker, you get uh, Mark's swing trading along his watch list every week, along with his guidance on the Discord, along with our uh, Friday uh, Platinum call, along with Carrie's uh, uh, Zoom call with Carrie on Friday, um, you get a ton of stuff. You get a morning newsletter, update on what markets are doing. And there's a whole bunch of stuff we're doing for basically 60 bucks. And if you use the discount code uh, that you can see below, you get 50% off for the first three months. And then, of course, it goes back to 60. You're getting a ton of stuff. And so the way I look at this is you have to start paying attention to what really is happening in the economy. Here's one other thing I read. Goldman Sachs bought a uh, really sizable building. I think it's like 1 million square feet of space that used to be an AT&T building uh, just uh, recently. They paid, I believe, $2.54 a square foot, roughly $3.5 million. This house behind me, that's seven to ten million dollars if you were to sell it commercial real estate is getting crushed and the banks that are going to survive and who can endure this are the banks that have a trading arm so it's the bank of america's it's the goldman sachs it's the uh, jp morgan chase it's uh you know city um, I don't know if Wells Fargo has a, a trading department, but more likely they do because they have a wealth advisor division. So anyhow, when you're allocating your portfolio, you need to look at where the money is going. And in particular, according to the best of U.S. investors ETF tracker, it's going to, it's going to commodities, energy, uh, agriculture, countries that generate that kind of product. And the reason is, is because there's demand for it. And that is typically an inflationary asset class that goes up along with Bitcoin. Bitcoin sitting at 70 grand right now. It literally on a chart looks like it's uh, setting up for a bust out here in the near future. The halving is supposed to happen between the 17th and the 21st of this month. So just, well, next week, really, and chances are we'll see a little bit of a bump in Bitcoin, but the mean coins will probably get a bigger bump. But as well as uh, uh, over time, probably over the next six to 12 months, you'll see Bitcoin start making a move higher into the uh, six digit range. And eventually, potentially, you know, everybody's speculating it's a million dollar Bitcoin. So if you owned a tenth of a coin, which right now would be seven grand, and you just sat on it and it went to a million well wouldn't that pay your part of your house mortgage off i don't know would that fund your retirement i don't know start thinking a little differently when it comes to investing look at store of value look at where money is flowing and well just be realistic anyways i'm out 10 minutes is up i'm here at the beach at home it's a double red flag so if you're in my area on the panhandle of florida don't get in the water because if you do, you're just stupid. Anyways, don't be stupid with your investments. Don't be stupid with your life and swimming in double red flags. Think of the market and the economy as a double red flag right now. Peace, live loud.